This is the maintenance section. And in order to get into the maintenance areas for the press, you need to be logged in as a supervisor. So once you have logged in with a supervisor password, you go to the iPress Easy Navigation, and you're going to bypass level one operator by pressing the green arrow to the right. With the proper password, this is an area for supervisors and press knowledgeable personnel only. Any changes in settings and you own it, you mother. Exactly. So main motor clutch brake settings. Uh, clutch brake settings is max start time, minimum brake angle, max brake angle, max brake time. These are settable values and to the left are the actual values that present themselves on every stroke. This is preset at the factory and should not be modified without the authorization from Sutherland. And prior to making any adjustments, a picture should be taken of all of the current settings. Main motor parameters, this is the minimum rated speed for the press and the maximum rated speed for the press. Below and above these speeds, the press is no longer under warranty, so please be sure these settings match the plate on the press. ACAM, BCAM, and TCAM are Rockwell settings for safety, top stop, and auto carry up. Again, these should not be adjusted. Back to the I press button. Now you have access to get to your lubrication. As you'll see, our software has been programmed for two types of machines. The black is blacked out because it's inactive for this type, which is recirculating oil. We'll show you that in a moment. And the grease lubrication machine is the type of press that we're working with now. So you've got an automatic grease pump and you have a distribution block that is monitoring the flow of the grease. If you have this on, every time the press power is turned on, the grease pump is gonna go through a cycle. If you're the type of company that turns your press on and off frequently, we recommend that this is turned off so you do not over lubricate. Preset lube stroke interval. Uh, a good setting is 2,500, sometimes 3,500, depending on if you're using the press in single stroke or continuous. The way to monitor that is look at the amount of grease collecting on your slide gibs and connecting rod area, and that's how you can set it. Actual value, so this is showing that you are at 2,231 on your way to 3,500 before the next stroke and lube cycle will begin. And the distributor block pulses, again, is a settable value. We recommend that you keep it between five and six. And again, anytime changes are made here, you should be taking a picture beforehand. The yellow button on the bottom is if you are ever run the grease pump out of grease and you want to prime the system by pressing the prime button when it's green the grease lubricator is pumping grease through the system now we're going to go on and show you oil circulating type for straight side presses now we are demonstrating the automatic recirculating type lubrication system that comes on larger straight side presses so in the case of many conventional presses, you would have a one pump system. And what we're demonstrating here would be a higher speed press that would have pump one and pump two. So press will not operate if the pump is off. So it is always on when the power is turned on, the pump for the lubrication. Suction filter is showing green, clear. If it were faulted or plugged up filter, it, the green would be gone and the red would be on. Distributor filter, same green and red indicator. Distributor block number of pulses minimum. So these are settable values and any time a supervisor level is coming in to adjust any of these fields, they should refer to the manual and take a picture of the settings as it came from the factory. So you've got distributor block minimum pulses, distributor block maximum pulses, 
and actual pulses per minute. And you also have a main tank level, green meaning you're at a good level, red meaning your tank is running low. And you can also set the air counterbalance lubricator to lubricate every 3,500 strokes or whatever setting you prefer. And then the ACB air counterbalance timer to pump for 20 seconds after the 3,500 strokes has been reached. So this is a good idea of how the lube systems work on both oil recirculating and grease lube machines. So we're gonna go back to the main run screen and then we're gonna come back into the supervisor level uh, fields. So now you've got light curtains and you have the ability, depending upon how you're using the press, always on means the lights are on th during 360 degrees and if the mute button is selected, this would be used for hand feed operations where the light curtains are off from 180 degrees to 360 degrees. So that is settable only by a supervisor. Back to the navigation, off to the maintenance and life counter screen. So this is again only fields that are accessible to supervisors if you want to perform maintenance at, we'll set a low value here for demonstration purposes, maintenance reset, it's now going to count up to 5,000, which will be displayed on the main run screen, and it'll stop and say maintenance counter reached. Uh, total life counter is a set, not settable field to be used for Sutherland Press maintenance technicians when they come in. And then you have access to a suggested maintenance schedule, something very cool and unique to Sutherland Presses and the iPress control. And these are basic 101 maintenance of what should be done daily, weekly, monthly, every six months and every 12 months. Uh, back one screen, back to the iPress navigation. You have the language selection field, which you can select the language of your choice. You have HMI brightness, increase and decrease, and PLC or HMI reset. You have ejector uh, cam dwell delay, where you can set the upper and lower ejectors, which are on cam 11 and 12 and you can set the time for the seconds before the ejector will activate after the press has reached the top of the stroke. You have, back to level two supervisor, special modes of operation. This is a great tool that other press builders and control builders charge as options. As you can see right now, we're in normal mode, which means off, inch, single, and continuous but we offer three other modes standard. Micro inch will work towards the bottom of the stroke where you can hold, press and hold the buttons and the micro inch feature will bring the slide gradually towards the bottom of the stroke. Good for using during die setup and die monitor setup. Single on demand. Single on demand and continuous on demand are when the press is slave to the feeder or automation. So you have the ability for the press to run in single stroke. Every time the automation tells it that it is ready for the next successive stroke and you have a timeout feature. So if that single on demand signal does not come from the automation within 20 seconds, you will get a fault on the main run screen. Uh, back to the navigation, dual valve reset. Uh, in the case where you're Ross or Herion, but in our case, Ross air valves, they're dual safety valves. And if one or the other of the poppets get out of sequence, 
the supervisor level can come in, reset the dual air valve, and you should be back good to go. Uh, next, last two items, again for supervisor level, is overrun reset. So if the press for some reason was not stopping exactly on top, it gives you all of the steps on how to reset the overrun, which position to have the slide in, and then you press the overrun reset button. Same thing with re-zeroing the encoder. Uh, all of the steps are here, easy to follow, showing you your actual encoder position. We're at one degree right now, and then you would press re-zero the encoder. So these are all features that are only for technicians, press knowledgeable, supervisor level. Uh, this password should not be given to your average dumb shit operator. <laughs>